Hey everybody, welcome to Early Access Pie Charm. I'm your host, Nafiel Islam. Today, I'll be talking to Michael Golubev, who is the main creator of the Docker plugin. Now, Michael has been working on this for a very long time, so I thought I'd catch up with him and figure out when he started this, why he did what he did, and what he plans to do in the future. So, Michael, how did you start all of this? At the time I was working on the application server support, I still do support for uh, these plugins, so which uh, are not very popular these days, but they were popular like five or six years ago, and they are still a significant part of the ultimate. So at the time we decided that we are going to extend this support into the cloud. So I actually started to write plugins for cloud platforms known at the time. So it started with cloud Fungi and then some other, most of them are not like actively used in this day. And then someone told me that there is a new thing named Docker and that it is like, well, basically like cloud Fungi, but some <laughs> somewhat different. So we started just to, to support. So the first idea was that it is just a way that allow you to run some code somewhere else. So we just tried to adopt so the existing infrastructure for like our cloud support into the Docker. Yeah, and the Docker plugin had this had this history embedded into it like for a long time. So for a long time, the main action that you can do for container was named deploy. This like where comes from the application center where you have your like var and you deploy it into the application server. Then we used this for clouds where you took your application and deployed from cloud. And then for Docker, we also like the, the same infrastructure was used for all of them only, I think two years ago, or maybe two releases ago, we, we just finally removed. So I think the last usage of them of that application server, like verbs from our Docker support, because Docker, of course, is completely like different thing. Going back to the motivations behind this, did you want to start this plugin primarily because you wanted IntelliJ to move towards supporting more cloud um, deployment options because you saw that more and more people were using the cloud? Or is it because this is just something that you wanted to do and you just enjoyed building this kind of support? There was definitely uh, some like forces to 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 uh, go to the cloud and support development in some other environment, others than the local machine. And uh, honestly, at the time, I did not like understood uh, what exactly Docker is and how it is different and how I actually was not sure that this technology will like uh, will long time. At the very beginning, it was just one of the, like many plugins we started at basically at the same time. So at the same time, we started to do Oracle cloud support, uh, which was, which is still like in the marketplace, but never was downloaded for, I think maybe 200 times or something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there were like a couple of, of similar, like similar plugins I started to do. And then it quickly turns out that's actually very, very popular technology because it, it became very popular very, very quickly. And at some point it was just, so I, I found myself that the plugin is downloaded like much more times than I normally expect for any, any other uh, plugins in the area. And this time I actually decided that so. Uh, well, based on the demand, we, we just need to put more efforts into the Docker. So Docker became like the primary area of, of, of my efforts. Okay. So you started this Docker thing. It hit off. It got a few thousand downloads. And I'm guessing you're starting to think, how do we make this support even better? So I believe in the beginning, it was more about showing what containers are running and now it's a little more capable than that. Of course, you've always had support for Docker files and uh, making sure that's syntactically correct. So how did your thinking change in terms of what a Docker support actually meant in an IntelliJ IDE? 
we were participating in Docker cons from, I don't know, maybe from the third or fourth one. And we always had a booth and I was uh, always like part of the booth team. And we were constantly doing some weeks like testing and uh, actively like asking users uh, what, what they like actually want. And like users always told us that they basically want to run the application. They want to have experience of the local environment while running on, on, on the dock. What happens is our like run targets initiative, right? so run targets for Docker was like the first run, actual run target. A quick note here. Run targets inside of JetBrains is a new project, or rather it's an existing project that aims to make remote interpreters or things like remote interpreters more accessible. So for example, whether you have an interpreter on an Oracle cloud or an Amazon cloud or in a Docker container or anything else, we want to be able to give you the feeling of being able to develop locally. Okay, now back to Michael. We, we develop and I think all of this project is actually to bring the local and like local uh, experience into the development for Java, like primarily Java applications on uh, on remote uh, environments. Bring what uh, users of PyCharm and uh, Ruby and uh, PHP and uh, WebStorm already have uh, from the interpreters into the like into the world of Java, Go, and others IDs that are not like interpreting things, but need, need some computers. So in terms of milestones of the Docker plugin, how do you think about it? Did it start off with basic file support, then visualization, then panel? How Can you just tell me through what features or what things did you think that the plugin did over time that were like milestones? Just a dashboard thing with, I think, just probably two different actions. So you can deploy things in two or so launch container and like remove container from, from, from the Docker. Then we added support for the Docker file language. Uh, so just some basic uh, language support, editing support in the, in the editor. But then we extended to Docker Compose. Again, started from the editor support because it was like the easiest, like easiest thing, just added some like schema based completion validation, and, like similar editing features based on the like custom Docker Compose schema. At the time there were no like canonical official Docker Compose schema. So we just written our own. Then launching all the Compose application and managing Compose application like in the in, in dashboard style. Then different, not very successful attempts to implement them like Java debug for, for, for Docker applications. At this time, the guys brought the interpreters into the Docker plugin. And then finally, two years, so like year and a half ago, we started uh, combining this approach into the run target support and uh, for total. And at the time we significantly expanded the like uh, dashboard part of things. So we are now allowing a lot more, like a, a lot more de like developer to observe much more things in the Docker. So like from the previous release where the support for networks, like you can see networks in the Docker dashboard. So then um, this release, we will add things that are only available in the paid version of like pro version of the uh, Docker dashboard uh, in the docs of the stop and we will allow to like dig into the file system of the volume and into the file system of all the layers. So in the like the latest app, we have added capability of inspecting deep inspection of the image. So you can see which like layer of the image brings which set of files, which is like full core different optimization, specifically like in, in Spring Boot and uh, other like Quarkus environments uh, used in Java, where you are layering, uh, where layering the application may significantly impact the size of the image. And so where the ability to see layers is useful. And uh, right now it is mainly 
So the main goal for us is to support support other like Docker like other ways of uh, like working on Docker. After the Docker desktop became a paid feature, and right now the most watered ticket I have is to support Podmon in the Docker plugin. So that's what we are working right now. I really find that interesting because it's really gone through its own kind of journey. I wanted to ask you about the Docker ecosystem itself. Do you feel like languages like Python, Go, and Ruby were faster to adopt Docker than, say, Java? Maybe actually the adoption through here was faster, but I have to say that Java is not very slow. The adoption in, in the Java world and in the Go world, I think that maybe Go world was even faster than, than Python and, and, and stuff like that. This is what I saw. I did see that Go was the fastest to adopt Docker. And I think the reason for that is because Go is very simple. You can compile everything down to a binary. Even if you have HTML files in a web application, you can compile that down into a single binary and you can just put it in a container. Sometimes I wonder, why do you even need a container? You could probably run it anywhere for a Go file. But the interesting thing for me is that we've been working on this support slowly and steadily over time. And recently, you just said that right now there is a move from, say, Docker to Podman. So would you mind telling me a little bit about how Podman is different from Docker? Actually, that for, for the developer, the main like difference is actually not between Podman and Docker, but between the Podman uh, and uh, Docker desktop. So the, the current state and the current, current spike of the interest into the Podman, which we definitely see because I have like probably 200 or more than 200 watts uh, during a month for the Podman support, is just because so Docker told everyone a month ago that the Docker desktop will be played. One, and we can expect that uh, there is an interest from the community to like at least observe the, the other possible options. Right now, I would say that the Podman is something like it, it is, it is so definitely a, like good or uh, it is definitely um, um, ready to market technology, which can be used in the and actually is used in the production for main system. I think that Kubernetes has switched to, uh, so it, it, it is used inside, inside the Kubernetes now. Uh, so it is definitely, a uh, like very, uh, uh, internally very like prominent and capable technology, which is definitely 100 person, uh, persons capable of replacing the Docker company. But when it comes to like development, uh, developer convenience, then the deputy to stop definitely beats so Podman you know, with, with a lot of, with a big margin. So right now I would say that Podman is like Docker maybe four years ago, when there were like five years ago, when there was Docker machine, which was like the main like way of running Docker on Mac and I think on Windows. And right now it is basically the same way uh, for developers to run Podman you, on the Mac, you need to set up something like Wagrant or some other virtualization like manager. You need to set up some kind of virtual machine. Then you run Podman inside the virtual machine. So like for me, I just tried to do that and it's taken like one working day to launch it the first time. This is basically the difference. So inside the technology. The containerization thing, the capability of the, of the engines are basically the same. I think the Podman has a goal of mimicking the Docker thing completely. So they, at the very beginning, they promised that you can just replace for, as a developer, you can just replace so in the all common lands Docker with Podman and everything will work exactly like, like it was working for the Docker. Unfortunately for us as a like vendor, like which uh, tries to manage. So at least for us, for last, I think five or six months, they like brought complete support for the REST API. Basically again, 
100% mimicking what oh, we have in the Docker specification. And for us, the transition for, for transition for the user of the Docker plugin from Docker to Podman is uh, more or less more or less effortless thing. And I think for basically in the next year for idea, I think we have more or less the same capabilities of the Docker plugin uh, as a uh, user can expect for, for a Docker machine. Awesome. Misha, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And I hope to see you again uh, soon. And I hope to see that our plugin supports Podman as well as, of course, Docker Desktop pretty soon. Great. Thank you. And thank you for listening. If you want more of these podcasts, let us know on Twitter and YouTube. 